Hey, hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff here again. This time we're going to do another one of our, the first one, the one you never forget. A little series that was started by Zep Pearl, and I snuck her in there and grabbed the idea and started doing it myself, which he has no problem with. So, I did one already, and I just ran across an album that I bought that reminded me, and I, I kind of bought it mainly for this series, but also because of the nostalgic value of it to me. And today's topic is Michael Shanker Group, the Michael Shanker Group. Now, this is the second Michael Shanker album. This is the first one, the one that I never forget. This is where I discovered, and this is 1981's, uh, that is right, right? This is 1981's second album. Now, I'm sure everybody out there is familiar with Michael Shanker. Michael Shanker, of course, at the as a teenager, he appeared on the first Scorpions album with his uh, brother. And then he went from there and joined UFO and did all of their classic early albums. Big, you know, big involvement in the early days of UFO. And then he left that and went solo. And he put out his own stuff. And that's what he's been doing ever since. Of course, he's also been back in UFO. And he's also done some stuff, you know, all kinds of other group type stuff. But he's always releasing uh, stuff that's more geared towards him. This is where I discovered him. Now, I probably did not discover him in 81 when this came out. Uh, probably late 82, maybe 83. I'm not sure if it was that late. Here's why I'm thinking it might have been a little later. I remember, distinctly remember, this album. So this is the original UK cover for the same album. This is the reissue that came out like in uh, 2018 or so. And when I first started getting back into buying records, I bought this. Now, this is a US cover, and this is the one I had. And this was the album that I cut my teeth on. Fell in love with this album. Love this album to this day. And then, at the same time I had that, I had One Night at Budokan. Still one of my favorite, absolute favorite live albums to this day. And so, I remember distinctly having that album and this album and playing them to death. Now, the reason I'm thinking it might even have been as late as 83, because the other Shanker-related album that I had was the Michael Shanker Anthology, which had one album was UFO and one album was MSG. That came out in 83. I remember having all three of these and listening to them a lot. I might have had these earlier, but anyway, one of my favorites, still to this day, live album. So when I first got back into vinyl, I went after this album. I went after the first album for sure. Now, after getting those as a teen, I then went and picked up the first album. I have fond memories of listening. I used to have a paper route and I'd walk around the apartment complex. I had a walking paper route, not a bike paper route. And I would walk and I had my earphones on. And I still have vivid memories of certain bands that I listened to during the time frame of doing this paper route. This album, I played a lot. And I remember things like the first Rad EP, uh, Twisted Sister, uh, You Can't Stop Rock and Roll, Motley Crue with the Too Fast for Love. Those are some of the albums that I remember, distinctly remember, vividly remember going through my earpiece and blaring as I was doing that. This album was one of them. I just, I really, I still really liked the second album more. This album was a little thinner to me, but over the years, absolutely became a favorite. So those are the ones that just cut my teeth and broke it. Now, the, since then, I picked, I think I have everything on CD. I didn't drag out CDs, but here's what I got on vinyl. This is a Record Store Day live album from around that same time frame that came out uh, a couple years ago. Uh, Built to Destroy came out. Love this album. You could tell they were getting a little more polished. I later learned that there's a UK mix and a US mix. When they came out with the remastered CDs, they had both versions. That was when I really kind of was aware that they would do that. And I didn't know this up until about the time this, these came out, which is probably in the last 20 years. I didn't, I wasn't aware that you'd have a band overseas and then they, they'd come to the US market and the, 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 the US market would make them remix their albums um and i can't remember now which one was which but in some in in one country they were more they turned the keyboards up a little more in the other country it would be more guitar and i can't remember which one it was but if you go back and listen to the two versions of this you can hear a distinct difference the other one that was really clear is when the 35th anniversary edition of white snake slide it in came out same thing they released both versions and i found that there's the original uk mix before they did the member change and remixed it 
and everything. So interesting. But it, they did that here and the, to this album. This is the U.S. version. So love that album. I was a big Gary Barden fan. So all of the early years, Gary Barden was a fan. Assault Attack was where Gary had left and they brought in uh, Graham Bonnet. And I was not a Graham Bonnet fan. I can sort of kind of handle him now, but was never much of a fan. And this album was always the most, I just never listened to it. I didn't like it. Not a big fan. I like it now, but it's still, I don't know. I still have that and <laughs> that stigma against it where it's just kind of like, uh, I don't know. It's a great album. Something. This is one of the favorite albums by most people. But I'm like, oh, Graham Bonnet. I just wasn't a fan of his singing style. Um, I didn't like him on the first Impelitary album. He was okay with Rainbow. It's, you know, Alcatraz was okay. You kind of get, you know, nowadays he puts out stuff and I listen to it and it's decent. So it's hard, you know, it's just one of those things. Um, uh, I'm, I'm missing a lot of stuff on vinyl, of course. Macaulay Shanker. I don't have a lot of the Macaulay Shanker stuff on vinyl. I love this era. Macaulay's voice uh, was very much more melodic very much more radio friendly they were kind of stretching for that here um i have all this stuff i remember back in the day finding the import of the japanese live stuff and the acoustic stuff and just it was so thrilling to hear all that stuff so so he was there this is a this is just one of those compilations they put out not a compilation but michael's on guitar in every song and then they got all these other musicians that come in and do stuff and it's a lot of cover tunes pretty much what the new michael shanker album is slated to be that they're doing except for he's going to be going back and doing i think a lot of what they say a lot of ufo songs so it's again it's re-records of classics this is re-records of covers um, there is an addition a different version of that with this cover which i bought even earlier this is a single disc that's a double disc more songs but those are like albums that came out maybe 20 years ago and then we get into the newer era of stuff this was one of the ones i showed the video i scored it where i got it on amazon for pennies on the dollar i forget it was like twenty dollars and it's it's one of the ones that's autographed it was autographed under the shrink wrap it looks legit it looks like an autograph thing they were a special for something i think is what i read but anyway pick that up there are a bunch of them that either have not been put on vinyl or i have not found yet so there you go this is a compilation of the best of the axe man type stuff and it's got a bunch of live recordings i think there's another version of this that's also studio that might be a decade of mad axe man but this has got stuff from uh michael shanker's T temple of rock and uh michael shanker fest which we will see here michael shanker fest is when he came back and he started doing this with some of the other members you've got uh Graham, uh, you got all the old singers back on this album actually he br brings them all in he's got all kinds of other musicians so it's kind of like uh, bringing in the best of <laughs> doing a lot of things you got Gary Barton here and Graham Bonnet and Rob McCauley so you got all three of the singers you just mentioned and they sing different songs it's a great stuff it's kind of like a throwback to and it's got you know Chris Glenn he was one of the original bass players uh, Todd McKenna Anyway, Doogie White, he's a singer. He sings this stuff, too. He's the new singer for Alcatraz. So he plays Graham Bonnet in Alcatraz. Now, the new Alcatraz album has Doogie White. And it's got, instead of having, you know, all the other guitar players, you got uh, Joe Stump. So anyway, this is when he got back and he brought all the singers back and did this great stuff. He did it again here. Michael Shanker Fest. Another great album. This is the Revelation album, which I do have the... That came from the box set. I have the box set of... Came with the with a with a puzzle and some other miscellaneous puzzle, <laughs> a poster, um, a CD version with bonus tracks. So, and then some like posters and stuff. Just some little novelty stuff. Anyway, so that was I guess at that point the end of the Michael Shanker Fest stuff. And then he came back, uh, the Michael Schenker 50th anniversary, he came back with Immortal, which is back to just be an MSG, Michael Schenker group itself. Um, I think at this point, uh, if I'm recalling, I think Doogie White went on to, you know, do the singing. I'm have to double check that, but it's still great stuff. And then his most recent album, Universal, uh, that came out know, a couple years ago now. So now, you know, he's, the, he's got a new one in the works now, which is, again, more of, of cover stuff, but... I think this was the last main studio album. So, yeah, big fan here. Like I said, I've got everything, at least up until the most recent years, which I started buying just vinyl, but everything else prior to that and all the early stuff and even the stuff in between that hasn't come out on vinyl yet, I have all the CDs on. Great stuff. Big Michael Shanker fan. 
hopefully you are too. Anyway, there you go. That's where I started. That's the love I got. Unfortunately, I've never seen Michael Shanker live. He came to a place once fairly close to here, about four hours, and I just didn't make the trek, and now I'm regretting it. That place is closed, but anyway, I'm regretting that he came fairly close, and I didn't do it. Great stuff. Love him, though. Would love to see him live at some point. That's it for this one, though. Thanks a lot for watching. Rock on and rock hard.